Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. What's going on? Hey, if it's your first time checking out the show, I appreciate it. Definitely go back and watch. This is episode number 66, so we have now officially 20 hours of content for you to go back and watch. Hopefully, it's 20 hours of not suckable content, but that's up to you to decide. Uh, and if you are one of the cool kids, one of the elite, somebody who watches every episode and you order your supplies through me, what's going on? It's because of you that we get to keep doing the show. It's because of you that I get to have brand name hot dogs. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and if you want to order your supplies directly through me, certainly do that. It makes my day. Uh, 862-312-2026 is my number. That is my cell. You can text it or you can call it. I even have people who put everything in their cart and then they text me and go, hey man, I want you to get credit for it. Put my order in and I'll call you and we'll do it that way. That's awesome. It's like a virtual high five. So thank you to all of you people out there that do that. Um, if you uh, have not checked out the uh, iTunes version, it's WCR Nation on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, all those things. Just search and you can listen to the podcast version. Otherwise, it is on YouTube and you can check that out. And the people who win every single week is a comment on YouTube. So please go to YouTube and do a comment to get into the uh, the drawing. Every week we pull a winner. This week's winner is Brad Hyatt. What's going on, man? Um, you won $50 credit to Window Cleaning Resource and the swag bag. All you got to do, email me your info. Josh at Window Cleaning Resource, um, and we'll get that out to you. If you want to win, comment on YouTube. A couple of quick shout-outs that I want to do is for Wesley. What a man, Wesley, Chaz Miller, Cameron Clark. You guys are awesome. Uh, just a few of the uh, big names in the industry. So uh, what's up? I appreciate you guys. Whew. Okay, so intro is done. I'm trying to speed that up for you guys. You guys said my intro is too long, so I'm trying to go a little bit faster for it. Real quick, though, if you are watching this on YouTube, we're trying to get to 50 thumbs up. So right now, go ahead and click that thumbs up, and it means the world to me. Awesome. Uh, what's going on, man? This week we're talking to Bobby Walker. Um, everybody knows you. You were at the show. If these people who are at the show, you're larger than life. You're just that guy who everybody <laughs> knows. What's going on, man? Not a lot, man. How how you doing? Thanks for having me on. I, I was gonna wear my pineapple shirt, and I I forgot. I forgot we, we were gonna <laughs> we we're gonna do that. See, I like, like my that. second I, favorite shirt. So <laughs> see, yeah. see, that's when you. When uh, you're another one of those people, whenever you meet people in real life, as you've seen videos and things, you know, you, you meet them. Some people you're like, oh, hey, how are you? And other people are like, oh, how, hi, how are you? <laughs> you are bigger than I thought you'd be. Just I'm putting that out there. When I met you, I'm like, yeah. oh, this I, I recognize you now. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I got that a few times. Actually, the the funniest story we were I was in the, the elevator there at the Atlanta Hotel and there's a bunch of people in there. So there's that awkward silence, you know, when you're with a bunch of people and you're just like, kind of like all pretending no one exists. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, so I'm kind of in the middle. I'm just sitting there with my arms crossed, trying not to bump into, in, bump into anybody. And somebody said, uh, they broke the silence and said, Bobby Walker's a lot bigger in person than I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep, fair enough. So, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm uh, bigger than the average guy for sure. I, I just wish I was muscly, like the big guys. That's all. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, That's, it, is it, it is what it is, you know. <laughs> we were, we always joke with Steve-O. Steve-O really likes to go to the gym, you know, so we always mess with him when he shows up at these events and stuff. You're like, whoa, you can't bring those guns in here, you know, that kind of thing. So, but yeah. that, no, that, that is cool. When you're in front of a camera, too, everybody knows you, but yet mm. you don't necessarily know everybody because, you know, it's hard to put face. I know names and I know voices because I talk to people on the phone, but meeting people in real life and they're like, oh, I'm – so and so and you're like oh my gosh you okay now yeah. I know what you look like well and i had a blast with that you know the huge convention uh i i probably shouldn't say this but i had more fun just meeting people than than anything and and the oh, convention yeah. itself is great but i was on a high for probably a week when i got back just so so excited because i'm i'm just like a people person you know so like yeah uh you know that's that's kind of my thing and and i just had a blast and uh, meeting a lot of new people and, and then people that you've been friends with on Facebook for a long time that you've never met in person. So it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what keeps you coming back. Like the classes are cool. The speakers are cool. Like all that's awesome to learn, but like the people and seeing people, you know, and like, you know, these people so much, like the best friends in my life are literally from these shows. You know, I talk to mm -hmm. every single day and then you could see them in person again. It's like, you never, your technology is the way that you just, you're never away from people if you don't want to be. So. 
pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah good stuff. But uh, so if people don't know you, which is probably only one or two of them, but tell us about yourself. Like, tell us what you do, your podcast. Like, give us the rundown. Uh, it's funny you say that. So I don't have a – I actually don't have a huge following. My podcast has dozen of listeners, um, <laughs> is, uh, what have you. But no, so uh, – I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. You start directing me if I get a little too too gabby here. But uh, the short version is uh, I was in the corporate world for a little over a decade. I was in the security industry. So, you know, fire alarm. If, if you know who like ADT is, that was yeah, the yeah. kind of stuff that I did. Okay. So right. did that. Um, everything from installation up to, you know, middle management and then blah, blah, blah. You know, everything in between. Um, we... Uh, a couple of mergers happened, kind of, it was costing me my job and, and I was having a lot of success in the corporate world. But once the companies get so big, you get lost in the shuffle. My job went away. Mm -hmm. uh, literally the day I, the night I found out that I was losing my job because uh, I had friends that were still in management and one of them called me and was like, bro, your name's on a spreadsheet, you know, that just came out. About five hours before that, I had watched a video online about some guy saying, here's how you can start a window cleaning business. And I thought, that's beneath me, but interesting concept. And then, yeah. like I said, so five, five hours later, I find out I'm losing my job. I'm panicking. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start a window cleaning company and that's how I'll pay rent next month. And I was, uh, laying in bed, panicking, uh, didn't know what I was going to do the next morning. I woke up, went to home Depot, bought a lot of window cleaning supplies. I'm driving around in the car and it's like, I don't want to take this stress home to my wife. So I just thought, you know, I'm just going to, record some like video diaries so I can document my journey, get a little bit of stress out from, from within, talk to somebody and I uh, started uploading them to YouTube because my phone didn't have enough storage, you know, <laughs> to do all that. And I, so I started a YouTube channel called journey of a new entrepreneur. And so I've been doing that literally from day one to starting my business of like pure fear. Um, and it, you know, it's not like a how to kind of thing. It's just more of like, it's, it's just as a journey of a new entrepreneur. And, um, so I've documented just, you know, how I've tried to figure out how to get new clients and how I've been stressed and scared and days where I was, uh, one day I'm the king of the freaking world and the next day I just need a hug and, you know, and, and yeah. everything in between my son's my business partner. So, you know, you see him on there a lot. He's, he's young. He just turned 19 and, I document how I've been a total asshole sometimes and he's wanted to quit a couple of times as a result and how we've overcome <laughs> that. And so it really is a lot of cool stuff. And, and, um, um, and then I started a podcast too, same name journey of a new entrepreneur. And again, it's just a, just some like thoughts from, from my head, um, just a bunch of ramblings. I have mind dump Mondays where I just get on there and just kind of talk about what's, what's on my mind. And, and, um, that's it. So that's kind of nice. kind of what I do and started a window cleaning pressure washing company. I'm in, in month 18, 19 and uh, started out with a survival mentality. And now I have uh, uh, like a, a world domination mentality. You know, I've, I'm, I'm excited nice. and, and just really have uh, uh, a lot of excitement about the future. And I'm enjoying the, the process. So, yeah, Does so that good? needless. Is that that, that, that was th that was good. I think you got it. Yeah. <laughs> but All so right. that first month you uh, you made rent is what you're saying then. Yeah, month one we made rent, and I it was funny. Uh, I I thought because I was literally just going to be like, ah, we'll just pay the bills, and figure out what we're going to do, and because yeah. I thought, who the hell can make a living window cleaning? You know, I didn't know anything about this online community. Someone had actually ironically mentioned window cleaning to me as a business about six months prior, and I thought, do you think that little of me? You know, that was kind of my <laughs> response. Was like, yeah. I'm I'm a um, you know, vice president of a region and, and you want me to clean windows, you know, and, and then a hundred month... dollar tie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then, but m one month of window cleaning, I thought, Holy cow, I don't even know what I'm doing. And, and I'm making money. This, this, this has got some, some teeth to it. And, yeah. and, uh, so we've just kind of put our head down, dug in, listened to people. Um, I mean, I guess this is a plug, but it's just the fact of the matter. The very first thing I did, cause I discovered, I actually discovered the WCR online, just uh, Googling for like equipment. And actually I called and talked to John. He told me about this book that the owner of the company just wrote the uh, window cleaners marketing blueprint. Uh, I bought that back when it cost a lot of money and I read that damn thing because you can get it for free now online. And I would have bought it 10 times over. It it basically told me how to market. And I was just, just kind of like business building for dummies. And I just started uh, 
going through the pages and said, okay, I'll do that. And, and here we are, you know, we've, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I haven't arrived, but I'm really excited about what we've done and, and our business has a great online reputation and, and, and we're doing really well here. So, yeah, I was just talking to a buddy of mine, uh, Kurt Zelder, he's a uh, listener of the show, but, uh, we were talking about like, uh, his business. He's like, dude, like I'm not even window cleaning as much as I'm doing all these other services that I kind of added on. And I always thought I'd be a window cleaner, like how, how business transforms is like what your clients want. So as this whole thing rolls out, like what you thought 18 months ago or 17 and a half months ago is completely different now. Cause it's like, okay, as water flows, you know, it's going to go to the ocean, right? But you don't know mm -hmm. the path it's quite going to take to get there. And that's kind of the fun thing about that's the, the, the journey itself is, yeah. is to find out where you're actually flowing, what you're going to do and that kind of thing. And, and I'd love to Absolutely. kind of talk to you more about, I know you're not a new guy, but I wanted to kind of, we've been trying to do this show you were sick and we had this all since the convention, we wanted to kind of yeah. do this. So I wanted to kind of talk to you today about the newer business mentality because um, I've been into it a while and I, I, I've lost some of it. We talked about that too, where the longer you're in business and a lot of these guys, even on the Facebook groups and forums and things, they've lost the mentality in the beginning. Like they don't remember how it was to have $20 to their name. Like I can't afford a squeegee and a scrubber. What can I do? Like, yeah. you know, you go buy all of it. You got to buy two of this size. And one. No, no, no. You didn't hear me. I can't. <laughs> buy like i need to buy a sponge i need food and a sweet, yeah that's right right like ramen cost me a dollar 27 for a pack i know i need two of the you know yeah so you're not in that position anymore but you're newer to kind of remembering still the panic and, and i always tell people i remember when i have to force myself because you put it you know bad memories you tend to i do i tend to put them in a bowl and close the top and i don't have to look yep. at them but when i pull them up i can remember like shitty times right like those times where it's like okay so i have these three bills this one i know i have uh three 30 days before i have this one i'm going to get charged if i don't pay it within 15 days of the due date like i remember yeah. doing that where you got to like juggle and then all of a sudden like remembering going to the mailbox and seeing the check i'm waiting for and be like oh my god oh my god like this money is spent <laughs> and i need to go spend it you know so Oh, you yeah. lose that as you kind of go, but there's a lot of things that people lose sight. And if anybody's listening right now, you're in a different season. The person next to you is in a different season. Everybody is in kind of their own market. I always tell people you can't do things wrong, right? This is your business. You can be little, you can be big, you can have freedom, you can have no freedom, you can do whatever you want, but there's different times. And that's kind of what I want to talk about a yeah. little bit. And with with you and your business, you're in it, you're, you're, you're extremely successful in in where you're going and kind of your mentality. But in the very, very beginning, what is like the biggest challenge that guys that are newer may be going through right now? What's like the biggest challenge that you can remember in your in your career so far of doing this? Yeah. Uh, it, is it all right if I just kind of paint a small picture kind of where I'm at right now too? Just so, Absolutely. you know, uh, just as, so anyone that's watching this knows because uh, – I don't want to like speak with authority for some dude that's doing, you know, $2 million a year and, and suggest that he needs to be listening to me on, on how to build a business. But yeah. you know, where we're at right now, um, you know, I'm focusing primarily on sales and then of course on the back end building systems and things like that to grow. I've got one crew of two guys right now that does all the work. We're about to get the second truck on the road. So within my goal would be within 30 days to have, uh, two more guys, you know, out doing the work. So that's, that's where I'm at right now here in Florida, we're going into our busy season. So that's why I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ramping up, uh, yeah. uh, here and, you know, going into October. But, um, but I will say this, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't know everything about the window cleaning business and this is the first business I've built, but I've ran other people's businesses as well. So I'm not a complete, you know, doofus, but I don't, I don't know everything here. But, um, I would say if you're a, an experienced guy and you're further down the road than me, but you care about other people and you care about people that you don't even know, I still think I have some stuff that I can add for you here from the perspective of helping new guys. So, so I yeah. just kind of wanted to throw that out there, but um, so to answer your question, you know, like what's the first, um, uh, you know, the biggest issue at the beginning now, uh, it's probably going to be different for everybody. For me, it was kind of an intangible thing. And for me, it was um, uh, some, you know, people call it self-limiting beliefs or, or self-limiting doubts. You know, um, here I am thinking, oh my God, 
I, I wasn't even talking about building a business yet. I was just trying to, you know, like I said, pay the rent. And then whenever I realized, okay, you can do something with this, I, uh, and I thought, okay, I'll try to build a business. Then all of a sudden I'm thinking, who am I? Yeah, you know, I've never built something from scratch. I don't know how yeah. to do this. And I kept telling myself, well, if other people can do it, I can do it. But I think the first thing that a lot of new guys need to get over is you've got to, when you look at the successful people, you've got to realize they're just people. They're just some dude that woke up that morning just like you did. They only have 24 hours in a day. They have access to the same information that you have access to. So really kind of what it comes down to is, uh, you know, uh, to overcome that, that first weakness is some humility to admit that you don't know everything, um, some willingness to work your ass off. Uh, a friend of mine, Pat Clark, says you need some Goya, get off your ass, you know. And then, um, you know, so the humility to, to learn new things and the willingness to work really, really hard. And if you can do those two things, you can fail your way towards success. You know, it's like yeah. guys too often at the beginning, they start looking at like, well, what should I charge? And, and what's the proper way to do this technique? And what's the proper way to clean that? Who cares? Go out and sell something. Figure it out. The first, yeah. I don't know if you know this, Josh, the first job I sold on a residence. So I started out going into, um, going into uh, storefronts. But the first job I sold for, for a house, which was my second week trying to sell, was a 20,000 square foot mansion. Okay. <laughs> 20, I, and I'm not exaggerating. It's literally 20,000 square feet. It's a $12.5 million home. And I sold it. I, haven't cleaned, I, I hadn't cleaned windows in a house in my life. Okay. <laughs> I, I did not own professional. I owned equipment from Home Depot and Lowe's. And I actually, when they, they gave me the deal, I got on the phone with you guys and I'm like, overnight stuff to me immediately no. so I can clean this house. So anyway, saying all that to say this, guys, is if you're a new guy and you're starting out, you really just need to focus on a couple of things. One is realize you have the goods. And this isn't a pep talk. This is just the fact. You're just, you know, I'm just as good as anyone else and you're just as good as everyone else. And no one's better than anyone. Other yeah. guys just use their talents and, and, and push through the hard times. And then uh, focus, forget the technique, forget, forget all that stuff because a monkey can learn how to do it. It's marketing, you know, figure out what you're going to do to get stuff coming in and then figure out what you're going to do when someone responds to your marketing on how you're going to sell it. Worry about marketing, worry about sales. And then the, the operations side, you know, sell yourself into an operations problem. I promise you can figure out the operations side of things. So, yeah, it's funny that you said that I, I, this is uh, before I did pressure washing, I was driving down the highway where I live and I saw this building that I would called on a few times about windows and I call and all those semis are out there. It's a, it was like a distribution center and I call and I go, Hey, I'm just calling to uh, talk to somebody about uh, window cleaning or fleet washing. And the guy goes, ah, yeah, no, we're, our janitors still do the, uh, the window cleaning. And I'm thinking, Oh, okay. And he goes, but fleet cleaning, we're actually looking to change. Can you do a demo? And I'm like, Yes, yes, I can. So we scheduled the demo for one week and one day, and I had never washed anything. I didn't even own a pressure washer. I had to go get ten gallon a minute machine and tanks and a truck and hold the whole thing. I showed up to the demo. The guys out there on the lot smoking as I'm cleaning a truck, like I watched on YouTube. You know, like yep. doing this yeah. whole thing, and then I'm done. And he's like, "Cool, you got it. Ninety two thousand dollar job I got in 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 as, as as a completely fluke. Never did it before ever in my life." Oh my so, god. That's, that's my same story. Just pressure washing instead of window. Cleaning. That's exactly. my exact same story. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And when people are like, "Well, you know, it's only skill." Like luck. I'm telling you, luck is involved in business. It just is. Now you have to, you know, put it out there so luck can find you. You know, you can't just sit on your ass like, "Uh, hope it finds me soon." You have to go do it. But you know, perfect timing happens. We've landed high rise, you know, large jobs where it was like we were just talking about how we hate our window cleaners. I just happened yeah. to call like luck does play in that but like you said man i love that like it doesn't we're all the same as far as like what we can do we all have access to the same videos and books and every resource right anybody can kind of do this kind of thing it's just yeah. what stage you are or what you want to do but yeah well, and, somebody and you can oh i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead well i was just gonna say and you can be terrible and still succeed with with hard work and now you won't i don't think you can be terrible and scale you know, so I don't know that you can be terrible and get beyond being an owner operator. And when I say terrible, I don't mean doing terrible quality work, but you can not know how to sell and you can not know how to design a good flyer and you can still make a living and, and get a start because you're not, you know, you, your job is not to go out there and convince someone that they need their windows clean or to convince someone they need their house pressure washed. 
people are already out there that want it. Your job is just to find them. Yeah. So, you know, if you kind of get the mentality that, okay, yeah, I'm going to go out today and I'm going to walk into 80 businesses or I'm going to hand out 300 flyers today or 400 flyers today and do it again tomorrow. Don't think 400 is a lot, folks. But, you know, if I'm going to do those things and I'm going to get turned down on almost everyone, well, that's that's demoralizing. But if you don't look at it like I'm trying to get every one of these people to say yes, and it's like all I'm doing, I'm just I'm just – weeding through all the bad stuff to find that guy that woke up while him and his wife were drinking coffee. She said, you know, we need to get the windows cleaned, you know, honey. He's like, yeah, we do. We'll get on it. And then the next thing you know, you put a flyer on their front door and I'm not even kidding you. And I have, I'm telling you, this is 12 years of experience in sales and marketing and stuff. People will literally think it was an act of God. People will mm -hmm. literally say, this is a godsend. They will think that God, and maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. I'm not commenting on that, but but people will talk about it in the morning. You just happen to be the guy that put the flyer on there that day, and you're their favorite person, and you're the man. So you can be bad at it, and you can have a bad flyer, and you cannot know how to sell. But if you can just get out there enough, you're going to get lucky. And that's probably the first step to, to doing something. You know? Yeah. Nobody goes to the grocery store to buy gum, but gum is in every aisle. Why? Because if it's in front of you and somebody goes, ah, you know. Man, my and they're standing in line. They grab the gum. You know, like if you're in front yeah. of people when they need you, they're the ones. That's why you see giant cheeseburger billboards. It's just a giant cheeseburger and an M, and it says next exit. It's because yeah. that billboard exists because somebody's like, oh man, I am so hungry, and they go, holy cow, there's a burger right there. You know, like. But no one ever eats. says I want McDonald's, but they say they're hungry. <laughs> and they and that's that what time. happens to be there. That's exactly, exactly it. Like nobody searches the stuff out. All you got to do is be in front of people. You know, so I, it can be cliche. You know, the cliche is the harder I work, the luckier I get. And it's so true because at the end of the day, it's just a, it's kind of a numbers game. And then what's going to happen? So new guy that's listening here, um, you know, you're discouraged. You don't know how to get started. Get the numbers out there. And what's going to happen is you're going to get like a response of point zero 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 one, you know, because you don't know what you're doing. And that's OK. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but what's going to happen is when you sell the one, then you're going to think, oh, shoot, this is what was important to that person. And then you make a little change. And now you're getting a point zero 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 one response, you know, and, and you get yeah. better at sales and you get better at this. But um, a lot of guys, they get petrified and they don't want to start. And I guess that was kind of my point as we're like rabbit trailing here. But a lot of people, they don't ever start something. I was one of those people because I was kind of forced out of the nest. I lost my job. That's probably the only reason I did this. But a lot of people won't start because they feel they got to have everything laid out. And that if they're going to start this plan, it needs to make them a million dollars within 12 months. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's not going to happen. But if you'll do it, you can work your way. You can fail your way towards, towards success. And, and, and it, hap it, you know, it doesn't happen for everyone because a lot of people quit with those failures. But I don't yeah. think there's one person that's built a successful business that didn't have a, a Based off of everything I've read and my experiences, I don't think anyone that's been successful doesn't have a trail of, of failures along the way. So. Oh, yeah, and everybody's path, like we were saying, is different. So, you know, there's not one, like, 100%, here's the line, follow that line, and you will be completely successful because there, there's little variances. And the only way to find those is to do exactly what you're saying, you know. Yeah. But as somebody who's still kind of, you know, like I said, we're talking about the new guy, but what – what is it that scares the new guy the most as far mm -hmm. as not the every day, but like what is the biggest fear for somebody who say has been in business as long as you right now, where, you know, you're very, you're, you're, you're seated. We're never mm -hmm. secure all the way, but you know, you're still like, what was your early on like fear? Well, again, for me, the fear was always uh, being able to sell enough, you know, like for me, it was as simple as that because I, I wasn't worried about scaling early on. I wasn't worried about getting other people to do the work properly. I was just, I was worried about paying the bills. So it was always in the back of my mind of like, how the hell am I going to provide for my family and, and get enough, you know, deal flow, enough leads coming in so that, that I can succeed. And uh, do you, can I move on with that? Or do you yeah. have a follow-up question to that? So, yeah, no. um, and at the end of the day, that's really, if you're watching this episode, okay, so if you're watching this one and you haven't turned it off yet, it's you, you're not one of these guys that's starting a business because you have $20,000 to get out there and do sales and marketing with. Probably not, or you wouldn't be listening to me. Um, so, you know, early on, the key is to to find something simple, 
affordable, that's probably not even scalable, quite frankly, that's going to allow you to get in front of enough people to, to get a foothold. Uh, yeah. What we did, uh, so I'll give you an example, and, and this is kind of, gosh, my mind's going so many ways right now, but, but what we did pretty early on is we started doing flyers. I didn't have a lot of money. Um, the little bit of money I had, I did. I bought some equipment. Probably, probably shouldn't have bought what I what I did buy early on, but it wasn't like crazy. I didn't go crazy with it, so yeah. you know, no big regrets anyway. But, but I didn't have a lot of cash, but I could buy, you know, a few thousand flyers. So we bought flyers and we just started started getting them out. And, you know, I think as a new guy, I would be on these Facebook groups. And I would post stuff or I would see other people post things and like flyers would come up and you'd see all these guys that, that would say, oh, that doesn't work. You're an idiot. If you're doing flyers, you need to put your money in something that's going to give you a better return. And then they would name, you know, direct mail or they'd name Facebook or they'd name Google AdWords or, or something along those lines. Yeah. And and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, do you realize I've got to pay rent next month. You know, it's like I don't have Google AdWord money. I don't have money to do to pay someone to do Facebook ads. I, I don't have this. And so I, I would be sitting here and watching these guys telling me how stupid I am. And then again, uh, you know, go back to Chris's book, The Window Cleaner's Marketing Blueprint. Here I have this book from this guy that has built a multi million dollar business saying he's like, do this, then this, then this, then this. He's like, he's so I've got like this guy who built his business, sold it, has money. And then I have these guys on Facebook. I don't know who the heck they are, but they're mm. they're wanting to tell me that I'm stupid. And fortunately, I I went with Chris. You know, I said, yeah. "Okay, I'm going to do what what he said." So, we started handing out flyers and we went with a strategy. Strategy number 1, new guy is I had a guy hit me up on Facebook the other day and he's like, "Hey man, can you help me out? I've been doing flyers, but I I put 100 out the other day and didn't get a response." And I said, the, okay, I've I've we found your problem. This is here. an easy answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so the very first thing, you know, if you're a new guy starting out, is, whether it's flyers or whatever, uh, whatever your your strategy is here, it's thousands and thousands. You know, like like if you're a single guy just trying to to make a living, you probably need to get like four thousand flyers out in a month, and you can now start like breathing a little bit. You know, because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna sell one half of 1% of what you put out probably, you know, I mean, you could do better, yeah. you could do worse, but then not only do you have to put them out, you got to follow the strategies and you got to hit the same places multiple times. So early on when you're desperate, maybe you hit that same place every week, more strategically, it might be to do it every three weeks, you know, and kind of, kind of put your, your things out there and then ignore the know-it-alls that are online that are telling you that stuff doesn't work. And here's how we know we should ignore them is they're too busy on Facebook bragging about how great they are, but they're just sitting at home because they don't have any work and they just yeah. want to tell you, ah, you should spend your money on this. Don't listen to broke people for advice. Listen to the guys that have been there and done that. When you look at Chris Lambernides, you look at a Brandon Vaughn, you look at a, a, a Ray Burke, you look at a, a Josh Latimer. Those guys are the ones that have been there. They've done that. They, they either currently have a successful business or they built it and they've sold it. And they tell you to get out there boots on the ground Every day, walk to your feet hurt. I have literally, literally walked, uh, did so many flyers that I had to take two days off because I'm old and I've got a bad ankle from <laughs> high school. I'm like Al Bundy, you know, and have old football yeah. injuries. But that's the thing, guys, is, is uh, you know, so Josh said at the beginning, and again, Josh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I'm probably taking up the whole episode with this rant. No, no. But, but uh, n nothing will make up early on. Noth nothing will be more important than some massive action and and ultra hard work because you don't have the cash, but you got to remember, you're just trying to find those guys that had coffee with their wife that morning and said, yeah, we do need to get the house pressure washed or yeah, we do need to get the windows cleaned. They're out there. If you're yeah. in a small town, they're out there. So you just need to get them out, find those people and then fail your way forward. Don't worry about your pricing structure. It's okay to underbid jobs early on because you know why you're getting paid to learn. And if you're window cleaning, you're basically pocketing every penny that comes in if you're window cleaning yeah. early on. Who cares what your margins are? Who cares what your profit really is? Get out there, undersell the job because you don't know what you're doing, and then realize you worked you know, for $4 an hour and know that the next time you need to raise your prices. It's okay. Yeah. Fail forward. So anyway, sorry. Yeah. Am I, am, 
I'm, am I ranting here? I'm sorry. No, I'm ranting. No, I'm, just, I'm, 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 I'm watching the same episode that everybody else is watching. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. No, right, but that, that's that. People always say too. They always go, "Well, I don't know if I'm giving it enough. You know, it's just not working out." I say, "Well, how much time are you putting in?" I'm, I'm, I'm always working. Are you always working? Or here's the thing: no matter if you had a job, everybody who gets into window cleaning, except for like the one percent who came straight out of say high school, has had a job. You have eight hours a day if this is your focus to do this. You can go out there and knock on doors for eight hours. Maybe people are rejecting the idea that they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the service at the time, blah, blah, blah. But you have eight hours. Push it for eight hours, and that will get the growth. If you don't have the money to do it, which a lot of people, like you said, no one's got that in the beginning. But you have time. You have time or you have money, like we talked about earlier. Like, Go out there and force that eight hours of actual on-the-ground work, and I'm telling you, Eight hours of work to something will equate to something. It's not going to be just out there. It's the guys who go and they, they play, uh, you know, Xbox all day because they put some flyers and they're waiting for the phone. You're, if you're waiting, you're doing nothing. Like, do that later, you know? You, you, you've got, like, okay, you got three things to do early on. So you, you, you get to market. So, so here's your three-step process to success owner Bobby operator Walker's all right steps to success go ahead yeah. and th this is free uh the paid version has the fourth step you can hit me up <laughs> fine uh, <laughs> those are the premium so, steps yeah yeah step one market right so it will just continue with our example here because it's what i did uh so my marketing strategy was flyers and thousands and thousands of them so step one market step two is sales so sell, the sales portion of that, if you don't understand the difference, is marketing is what you do to get someone to get interested and call you. The sales is when they've called you. So either whether you're selling over the phone or in person, you need to have an actual process that you're going to follow. Now, mm -hmm. if you're new, don't turn down a sales opportunity because you don't have your process. Go fail forward. But – you need to get a process. There's a ton of resources out there. I've even got some stuff on my YouTube channel a little bit talking about packages and things to make it super, super easy, even for someone that's not uh, real um, bold. Okay. You market, you sell, and then you cash the check. And that's it. Now, step three with cashing the check obviously includes cleaning the windows. But the reason I don't say clean the windows, I say cash the check is because cleaning the windows is the least important thing you're doing. Um, I think one of the things, maybe the foundational thing that, that we did that has helped us, uh, I'll go, I'm just going to say this, I'll be bold and say, we're being very successful and it's not because of a certain dollar amount. We're being very successful because we're achieving our goals and we're doing like what we want. And the reason I've had my version of success is because on day one, so my son, who's now 19, who started this business with me, he's, he's a business owner. He knew nothing about business early on. And I said, Caleb, here's the deal. We're not starting a window cleaning company. We're starting a sales and marketing company. And we just happen to be marketing and selling window stuff. And I think that's why we've been able to leapfrog a lot of guys that have been in the business for a long time. Because when you go online, you see guys get in pissing arguments over what squeegee rubber to use. Right? What soap? Soap wars. That's the original, like, uh, yeah. you know, war. So, yeah. so you, you see all that. So don't worry about cleaning the window. Market it, sell it, cash the check, and then just go back to step one. There's no step four. I was joking. All right. One, <laughs> two, three, back to one. And then, and then what will happen, you, you know, because you might say to me, well, Bob, I've read the e-myth. I know I need to work on my business. You're just telling me to work in it. Well, I made this mistake early on because I read the e-myth and I read the five secrets to phenomenal business. And I read all these, these books that are amazing. And I started like trying to work on my business instead of in it. And it tanked me, you know, like month one, we did $4,500 in revenue. Month two, we did 10,000. Then month three, we did like 4,500. And then month four, we did 10,000. So like I was doing really good, you know, right out of the gate doing, you know, not knowing what I was doing. And then month uh, one, two, three, month five, I think it was June of 2017. I did $2,800 in revenue. Now my old income was a lot back in the corporate world. $2,800 doesn't pay my bills. My son, so here I'm a father. My son worked all month and he didn't get paid. So imagine what that did with my, my uh, um, psyche and everything. But the reason yeah. we, we tanked is I stopped doing step one, two, and three. 
And I was over here step working on step seven, which is what the guys that have the million dollar businesses, what they're working on. But I just wasn't yeah. ready to do it yet. So I was doing like the right thing at the wrong time. So right. don't don't worry about over systemizing things. Don't worry about what squeegee rubber, what soap, water fed pole versus traditional. Who cares? Market it, sell it, cash a check, go back to step one. So. Yeah, yeah. You can help grow. That's there's the difference between too, like the guy who's got you know, a $20,000 a year business and the guy who's got a million dollar a year business is that one, two, and three still exist as the number one and the number two and the number three, but there's like one through 27 on the million dollar because now he's got an HR department and Mm -hmm. there's a whole nother, there's different things, but you don't focus on somebody else's problems. You focus on your problems. Yeah. And, and and I I think uh, I'll finish this analogy here, but if, if you look at it from that perspective, Probably there's no other steps. All it is is just one, two, and three starts to get so big, you have to have infrastructure under it. Mm-hmm. But you know what? If you're, if you're not doing $300,000, $400,000 a year, which isn't a lot, but if you're not doing that, you don't need to worry about the infrastructure yet. You know, what you, that's when you need to start planning for it. But when, you, when you're starting out, owner, operator, or you got a helper with you, one, two, three, boom, that's it. If you focus on other stuff, you're just sabotaging yourself and you're going to hurt your productivity and ultimately what you care about, which is the money in your pocket. So. Yeah, and there's only 100% of your time. No matter how hard you work, there's still 100% of you. And if you're working on 20 steps and, and 18, 17 of them aren't needed, you're taking all that away from one, two, and three. So I like that. Mm-hmm. That's a really good thing. Yeah. Well, good. Well, you know, I really, really genuinely appreciate you kind of coming out and, uh, and talk. But finally, we got to meet in, uh, uh, in real life, which was awesome. And I appreciate you kind of doing this whole thing. But uh, one more time, tell us your uh, uh, podcast, uh, YouTube channel, all that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, a couple things. Uh, I've already mentioned it, but just a big recommendation to any new guys. Uh, it's not my thing, but it's a book. Uh, two books that, that I think will help you get your head on straight. The first one you can download for free, The Window Cleaner's Marketing Blueprint. Um, yes, if you're watching this, I know that it's a WCR book that it's got real shit in there. You need to read it. It's going to help you do it. And then the second one is called The E-Myth Revisited. And The E-Myth is just going to – it's not going to change what you do so much on day one when you're starting your business, but it's going to help you – you know, when I've talked about failing the right direction, the e-myth will just kind of help you fall the right way. It'll let you know where you need to work. So to any yeah. new guys, I would recommend both of those things to you. Um, but the blueprint's probably, the, there's no probably, it's the most important because that's just going to tell you how to make some cash today. Um, then how you can find me, uh, Journey of a New Entrepreneur. You can, I have a Facebook page. If you want to message me or something, get on the Facebook page. That's the easiest way to get in touch. YouTube channel, you can get on there. Um, don't don't plan on following me and learning how to build a business, but if you just like to watch someone's train wreck trying to, <laughs> to figure things out, get on YouTube, watch it, Journey of a New Entrepreneur. And then I do have a podcast. I've only got about 15 or so episodes on there, but uh, it, it's a passion project, Journey of a New Entrepreneur on iTunes. Uh, it's supposed to be on Google Play, but I don't know if it really is. So. <laughs> well, nice. If you're listening to this or you're watching this, go there now. Journey of a New Entrepreneur, and and subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel because subscribers mean everything. It really does mean a lot. And if you need any type of supplies, please don't hesitate to call 862-312-2026. Hit me up. Make sure you thumbs up this video. Like I said, we're looking at 50 on YouTube. If you are watching this on YouTube, comment down below and get entered in. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, blah, blah, blah. Please give us a review and share the content, man. Share it to everybody you can. It is always genuinely appreciated. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you again for uh, coming and talking. And uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.